The Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase is this weekend at Tria Rink against both Chicago and St. Louis. Who are some of the names to watch? Who's playing? We discuss on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. What is up? What's happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes, especially with the preseason getting closer. You'll want to make sure that you are up to date on everything going on with the Minnesota Wild. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we preview the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase with Alex Micheletti, taking a look at the roster, some names to watch, and uh, we will also take a look at some potential best and worst case scenarios for the Wild this season. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. And uh, as mentioned, Alex Micheletti joining us for his Monday appearance. Alex, we've got the prospect showcase going on this weekend. The NFL season started um, (laughs) this past weekend. There's a lot of sports going on, but most importantly, the Minnesota Wilds are 17 days away from getting the preseason started and actually even less than that. They're 13 days away, two weeks away from preseason hockey. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. the The summer is finally over, and we're getting getting the ice ready. Uh, you know, sports abyss is done, and like you said, got football, baseball playoffs. You know, NBA will be get, getting going too. So, like all the sports going on all you know all at once. So, yeah, it's really really exciting and. You know, excited for this uh, prospect showcase. You get the number one pick coming to town, and Connor Bedard. That's gonna have you know everybody's eyes on. So yeah, it's uh, it's a very very exciting. Yeah, and uh, R.I.P. to the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, for those that listen to other Lockdown shows, I'm sure uh, you heard Luke Braun's breakdown by now of uh, everything that went wrong from yesterday. Um, I w- listened to most of the game in the car and. <sighs> Sure, PA and, and Pete were were having a tough time. Yeah, they got Baker yeah. Mayfield. <laughs> they got Bakered by uh, by Mayfield. So <laughs> we a lot of people probably did the uh, the standard uh, like we do anytime a season gets off to a rough start. As well, <laughs> when do pitchers and catchers report? <laughs> when do the Minnesota Wild start their preseason? When do the Timberwolves start playing? Well. As we mentioned, the Wild are getting closer to the actual preseason. And the final big event before the preseason starts is the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase. Plenty of names. As you mentioned, Connor Bedard will be taking part. So a chance to uh, to see him in action at Tria Rink. Uh, but looking at some of the names for the Minnesota Wilds uh, in who they will have attending this uh, this event. Uh, it is interesting because it's some names that we are familiar with, uh, to say the least. Um, but there also are some fresh faces that uh, will be making the round. So we'll just uh, go through each position group. Uh, let's start with the um, let's start with the forwards. We get to see Hunter Height, Gavin Hain, Brett Budgel, uh, Riley Height. Louis Boudouin, uh, Casey Dornbach, Maxime Shekovich, Carson Latmeyer, Rasmus Kumpenlainen, Sammy Walker, Servak Petrovsky, Pavel Novak, Roman Kukenberg, and Ryan McGuire. Um, Alex, any of these names pop out as interesting to you from that group? Yeah, I love to see Novak getting a you know a chance you know after what he's been through, mm-hmm. and yeah, that's it's a great story. I'm glad glad that he's uh, 
back skating and going to be playing in, in this event. It's, it's awesome. And then uh, Hunter height, um, you know, he looks like he's going to be a really good player. Um, you know, I'm excited for his future. And, and uh, the Riley kid um, was a steal in, in, in this, in this uh, past, past draft. So yeah, it's an exciting group. Uh, you know, it's not, not everybody, obviously, because some of the guys are, are overseas right now and, and, you know, playing in their, you know, in the KHL. So they aren't, going to be over here and Ogren's uh, currently hurt. Um, so yeah, ho- hopefully, hopefully we hear good things, you know, hopefully it's not too bad, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's exciting because uh, you know, the Blackhawks and, and the blues both have some really good prospects that are going to be, uh, you know, playing with the NHL team here soon enough. So yeah, it'll be good to see, you know, test them you know, against uh, two other clubs like that. And this gives a good opportunity for some of these guys to maybe get a little exposure. Like one that uh, that I think is interesting on the forward side is Dornbach, mm-hmm. who is one of us, and he died a native. Um, last uh, last played with Denver uh, this past season uh, in the NCHC. Um, just an interesting name of of somebody that uh, you know is getting an opportunity to just see what they can do. Uh, see what he can do uh, amongst some of the other wild prospects. Pavel Novak, as you mentioned, fantastic story as he uh, obviously has dealt with a ton and is now getting back into uh, to playing shape. And then you got uh, a player who has become, I think, a fan favorite, Sammy Walker, who uh, is going to be taking part in this as well. It is just a fun combination of uh, of forwards with different skill sets some new, some old. Um, it, it's going to be fun to see those guys get put into different line combinations and really uh, show their stuff uh, out there this weekend. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just another spotlight before they, um, you know, either go to, you know, Iowa or, you know, in the AHL or, you know, you know if they um, can make the Heartlanders too in the, in the, in the coast. Um, so, or, or go back to their, um, you know, junior uh, teams. So, yeah, uh, like I said, good, good test. Uh, good, um, you know, you know, it introduces some of the guys to the pro um, lifestyle too, and they'll be at a really nice rink in Tria too as well, and wear wear the wild sweater. And so, you know, that's exciting, and get to be in front of the fan base, and the fan base can continue to watch these guys after they are done with the prospect camp, and you know, like I said, go back to their teams or. Um, yeah, so it'll be fun. Or, you know, some of these guys, you know, like Sammy Walker, he'll be in training camp as well. So, yeah, uh, good good tune-up for a guy like that for him. Riley Height had 97 points in the WHL <laughs> in 68 games last year. I don't know year. how he fell. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. I, that's That was that was just some wizardry by uh, Judd Brack. He may, he may be better than Strammel, too, and Strammel won the first round. So, I mean, that's a steal where they got him that's that's just uh that's just judd brackett doing his thing Mm -hmm. and uh maybe now he can score uh, 97 points at the uh, nhl level we'll see we'll take it hopefully in a couple of years now defensively i think there is uh is a little more intrigue to this group it's a smaller group but uh, there are definitely some interesting names to keep an eye on so we will uh, we'll talk defense we'll talk goalies as well uh, as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. NFL season is here, and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. So if you pick the Vikings to win the Super Bowl, uh, unfortunately, you did not uh, cash in this weekend, but maybe you picked a team like the Green Bay Packers, who beat Chicago, or Miami Dolphins, who ended up beating the uh, the Chargers. If you did pick those teams, you uh, certainly picked up some bonus cash as well. You can use those bonus bets on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Tyree Kill, monster game, so hopefully you uh, picked him up as well. All in all, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. 
continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day for the everydayers as we continue with some finishing touches to Locked on Wild boot camp. We'll navigate through the defensemen and the goalies over the next couple of weeks uh, before we really start to dig in for preseason. Uh, We've got some uh, guests that will be lining up as well to uh, try to get some expectations hammered out with the season set to start. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Follow and subscribe on your favorite podcast platforms. All right, the defenseman in the Tom Curvers Prospect Showcase, Simon Johansson, Ryan O'Rourke, Damon Hunt, Landon Kozier, Carson Lambos, Kyle Masters, David Spachek, and Callum Parker. Uh, is the group that uh, will be making the trip for the prospect showcase. And Alex, this group is interesting to me because we have heard a lot about Lambos. Mm-hmm. We've heard, for those that have listened to Judd's Buds with Spoke Z, <laughs> we've heard a lot about Kyle Masters and uh, Ryan O'Rourke and Damon Hunt as well. Um, it feels like this is a group that is getting pretty close to making an impact on the NHL level. And for a team that has mainstays like Jared Spurgeon and Jonas Brodeen, it leads you to believe that some of the uh, spots in the back end probably going to be filled by uh, some of these names uh, here before too long. So a few that are definitely good to keep an eye on here this weekend. Yeah, 100 percent. You know that. That third pairing, uh, you know, there's going to be some spots there very, very soon. Like you mentioned, uh, you know, Goligoski's probably going to be hanging him up after this season, uh, most likely. And then John Merrill, you know, <laughs> who knows? I don't, I don't see him having a long term future here, but, you know, you never know. Um, so, you know, there's, you know, there's a couple spots right there. And then, you know, Kalen Addison, you know, his future is still really undecided. <laughs> he's not signed yet, which is mind boggling. Uh, you know, he's around the team a lot. Uh, the guys, but, you know, still hasn't signed. So his future is still, you know, up in the air. He most likely is, is, you know, it's just a one-year deal. So then, you know, who knows um, after that? Yeah. So, you know, you know, you you get a first round draft pick like Carson Lambos, um, you know, know, he is, his future is super bright and is probably going to be in the top six soon enough. And then got like a guy like Damon Hunt, that's really, you know, um, you know, spent his time in, in Iowa there and he's, I think he's ready if there's uh, if there's an injury. So yeah, those are a couple of the guys I'm super excited about. And o- Ryan O'Rourke has the size too. So yeah, it's a small select group. You know, Pert's not there, but I think he really has a you know bright future. Um, yeah, you know, making the wild as well. He most definitely does. And you look at, for instance, Lambos, who had 48 points last season in 61 games in the WHL. Also had 63 penalty minutes. So he is uh, a player that is not afraid to mix it up, which fits the bill of a third pair D. You know? Yeah. Be, uh, be the one to be the agitator and uh, just let everybody get frustrated out there. That's, that's how I would typically do it. The goalie portion uh, is interesting because we know the one name, we know Jesper Volstead mm-hmm. and the other two, um, are names that I myself am not uh, really familiar with and probably for good reason because they were invited to the prospect showcase. Uh, Harrison Menigan and Chase Coward, uh, the uh, other two goalies that will be making the trek. But honestly, from the goalie side, it's all about Volstead. It's, it's all about seeing what he is able to do after uh, dipping his toes in the AHL water this past season. Now is when things start to ramp up and he gets a ton of starts this season with the expectation that he will be uh, ready to go probably next year at the earliest. Yeah, this is big time. And uh, I thought it was really cool that he himself said that he's not trying to rush, you know, rush things that he knows that he needs another year. And, uh, you know, it's, it's perfect because you don't see a lot of goalies his age just go right into the NHL and become automatic starters. I mean, there's only very few Andre Vasilevskis, so in Carter Hart's and, and, and that sort of thing. So you want to be, uh, you know, hundred percent ready to go. Um, you know, you're going against, you know, the best in the world, not, uh, 
uh, not in the AHL. So, um, you know, he has to, has, has to prepare himself, um, get in that mindset. And, um, like, like we know, it's more mental than anything to, you know, as a goalie. So, um, you know, I think, I think he has it though. We all, we all think that, um, and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, continue to, to put in the work and, you know, stack, stack wins and, uh, you know, keep getting more and more comfortable playing, uh, over here. Um, the interesting part about this too is that for the last couple of seasons since this prospect showcase was created, it's been Chicago as the uh, the only team, the only other team that's been part of it. And now this year, you've got the St. Louis Blues added in, so we get a chance to see not only one team's prospects, but two others in the Wild will go toe to toe with both over the weekend. So you'll get to see the Connor Bedards of the world, but also the uh, the St. Louis Blues who have uh, a they, they've got some they've got some young guns that uh, that are going to help that team out uh, here in the uh, next couple of years too. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> it's a nightmare that that you know they have to deal with two future Gophers. Uh, you know, in this uh, Central Division, uh, Oliver Moore is going to be one heck of a player, and then Jimmy Snuggerud. Uh, you know, he he should he could be playing on the Blues this season if he wanted to. I mean, watching him as you know, I've been to many Gopher games, um, and his shot is NHL level right now. And so I'm sure he just wants to build some more strength, but like, uh, um, Logan Cooley, I, you know, I think he, he should be in this division right now, but yeah, lots of, uh, lots of gophers in the central division going, going up against, uh, the wild and, and the rest of the um, teams. So yeah, it's, uh, going to be fun to watch those guys, but you know, also, you know, nightmarish, um, playing them as well. Yeah. We, uh, we root for, them to have success against all the other teams except <laughs> the Minnesota Wild. So best of luck to Connor Bedard. I hope you score a million goals in the NHL, but I hope exactly zero of them come against Minnesota. Yes, let uh, you know have Taylor Hall just not uh, set you up against uh, against the Wild. <laughs> could it? Could we have one like legit superstar that? just does not play well against Minnesota. <laughs> no, like, it, you know, it's crazy and have some type of a uh, Minnesota connection too. It just makes, you know, hurts even more too as well. Well, we'll, uh, we'll find out quickly. I'm sure. Yes. That, oh yeah. Connor Bedard loves playing against Minnesota. Yeah, exactly. He loves, uh, um, he loves playing at Excel too. That <laughs> yeah. if we hear that, or if he, uh, Go stanchion on the bit, Patrick Kane. Uh, that will, you know, will bring bring up that that nightmare as well. He's got 50 goals in 10 career games against <laughs> yes. the Minnesota Wild. Like, no. He's the next again, you know, the Wild Killer. <laughs> oh, there have been so many names. Right. Um, that is just a an inkling of what could go wrong. Uh, this season is if Bedard has like. 20 goals in the three games against the wild. <laughs> um, so we're going to go through kind of some things that could happen in a best case, worst case scenario to finish the show today. Uh, and we'll discuss all of that as we continue today's episode of locked on wild after this final segment of today's episode of locked on wild. Once again, thank you for making locked on wild your first listen each and every day. Uh, we've got some uh, exciting additions to the uh, programming slate coming up here uh, for this season. Some things being worked out behind the scenes. Um, we're going to hit you with a lot this season. So uh, make sure that you're subscribed and ready. Make sure you have notifications on as well so you don't miss out on anything new because we'll uh, we'll be getting you ready for games. We, of course, will be uh, getting you recapped after games. But uh, we're going to be adding a couple of pieces just to try to allow for more time to interact with the listener base. So stay tuned for uh, for all that as well. Um, Alex, let's talk some uh, best case scenarios, worst case scenarios. And I'm not going to go the route with this of saying like, oh, worst case scenario, everybody gets hurt. Like <laughs> that's that's an obvious one. Right. And so I'll just throw some things out and we'll talk through them. Um, and I'm going to go worst case scenarios first. 
Worst case scenario for me this season is that the special teams are not fixed is that having a new power play coach does not lead to better results uh, in the special teams category. And um, some of those issues we saw with the penalty kill getting kind of out of position, uh, things of that nature. Worst case scenario for the wild this year is that that stuff is infinitely worse. And that uh, the penalty that the special teams units that are relied upon quite a bit are not reliable, uh, which would be just really unfortunate for this team uh, this season, if that's the case. Yeah. I mean, as we saw, I mean, the, the, the stars series, I mean, the stars scoring right off a of face off. It's just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's another issue too, is, is face offs uh, as, as we know. Uh, but uh, special teams, when you specifically hire a guy, you know, that's supposed to help the power play. And if it doesn't, then it's like, Oh, what, 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 what happened here? Cause this guy's, uh, you know, Jason King is supposed to be a, um, a specialist guru. So, you know, you know, that, you know, that it would definitely be a worst case in, scenario. Uh, you know, another one uh, uh, that I think needs to be brought up is Marco Rossi too. Um, if it doesn't go well, what do you do with them? You know, and that's a first round draft pick that you're expecting major things from. And this, this is the, you know, put up or shut up uh, season. So if it, if it doesn't go well, I mean, do you trade them at the deadline some, or, you know, and trade them in the summer? Yeah. It's uh, you need him to, to do well, but you aren't doing him any favors playing them, you know, out of the top six too. So yeah. that's going to be very interesting when it comes to lineup uh, construction with, with him. Cause he's the one interchangeable guy. Um, Another worst case for me, and it's not necessarily that, um, it's not that I don't think Brock Faber is ready because clearly he is. Um, it's just that we see some of those weird defensive things that we saw at points this past season, especially early in the season, that we see those again and you have just these bizarre breakdowns in in scheme and coverage that lead to just super easy goals for the opponent. Um, that was... That was an eye-opening start to the season. Obviously, it was corrected, but what happens if that is over a more extended stretch? We've just been so used to this team playing really good defense year in and year out. What happens if all of a sudden they just they don't? Like, What happens if there's something that other teams are able to pinpoint and repeatedly exploit that... Um, is, is not something that is easily fixable. Yeah. Well, and uh, just like last season, you know, getting, you know, Colorado just, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> absolutely destroying the wild, uh, you know, they get, uh, you know, Toronto and Florida, you know, right out of the gates, you know, two high scoring uh, teams. So, you know, that they'll, they'll be put to the test right away by Austin Matthews and, and company. So, yeah, we'll see with, with Faber too. Um, you know, he's never played 82 games, um, you know, so, um, you know, I know he's been, uh, you know, preparing his body for that. And, um, uh, all you can do is, uh, you know, you have to go, you know, go through it, through, through that experience, um, you know, to gain, gain experience and, and, and know what it, you know, takes, uh, to, you know, have, you know, that long of a schedule as a pro and, um, uh, you know, he'll probably, um, you know, uh, he'll be playing you know, with Brodine. Uh, so that's, <laughs> that helps a lot because he masks a lot of, uh, mistakes out there and is easy and comfortable to play with. And even if, um, you know, even if he doesn't play top four, uh, you know, they'll probably play with another, you know, go for Goligoski. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, that's another guy that, um, you know, has been in the league forever and, uh, is comfortable to, to play with long time. Um, the final one that I'll discuss, and obviously best case scenario is that this stuff doesn't happen. Right. Um, you still got to talk about it. So worst case scenario is a combination of goalie regression and the offense finding a way to take another step backwards, because that is kind of an, an under 
I think, reported potential thing that could happen. I don't really see it with, say, Philip Gustafson. And the regression could come in many different forms. Like, he could go from having a goals against average around two Mm -hmm. to, like, 2.4, 2.5. Still really good for a goalie. But if the offense is not capable of moving past what happened last year at points where they just, they could not score a goal and they could not maintain puck possession. If that is a problem again this year and the goaltending is not what it was last year, that's a problem, a big one. Yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, how many games got to overtime too, just based on the brilliance of, of Gus Fleury had some amazing uh, performances in overtime and overtime and shootouts too. So yeah, I mean, this team, the goaltending bailed them out so many times, uh, you know, last season. I can remember, uh, remember that late game against Colorado that was on national TV. I mean, Gus was absolutely incredible, and all the Avs top guys were like minus all you know, two, three, uh, you know, and he just frustrated the heck out of McKinnon and Ratnan. So, you know. You, you hope that uh, the goaltending, you know, stays the way the same way, you know, if, you know, <laughs> fingers crossed because, you know, they made it into the playoffs because of the way Gus played. So, and in flurry, you know, uh, when he had to, had to play as well. So yeah, that goaltending is the name of the game in this league. If you don't have a hot goalie, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Best, uh, best of luck to you. Um, let us know in the comments if we missed any, Uh, Because I know there are varying degrees of what this season needs to look like for the Wild, which is what we will talk about next week um, when Alex returns to the show. So let us know in the comments if there are any other worst case scenarios that were not discussed here. Um, I will stand by the fact that I think Lockdown Wild is one of the best audience engagements of... uh, of any of the uh, any of the shows in the central division um, I I think our our audience is is great at kind of generating discussions and thank so, you Danny, uh, for always being in there so let's uh, let's keep that rolling here worst case scenarios let me have them and uh, we'll we'll discuss we'll circle back to some of the best um, on next week's episode but that is gonna do it for today I know we said we'd get to the best case but we'll We'll talk about that uh, coming up here as well. We're not going to just we're not going to just go to the bad side. We'll get the good side too. But that is going to do it for today. Make sure if you are not that you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any Locked On Wild content through the rest of the off season, through the preseason, through the regular season, through the postseason. We'll see. Uh, all of that comes your way with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.